Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Hit that like button before we get started. Hit the subscribe button, Toasters, if you are not a subscriber. Hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the notification bell so you are notified when this content drops. Let's go, Toasters. Man, this is an exciting time. Tomorrow, which is Saturday, July 29th. We have a boxing match between Earl Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford. Now, I know this is not a boxing channel, but I'm a huge fan, a huge supporter of boxing. I've been watching boxing since the early 80s, and I'm an avid fan. I actually love the technical side of boxing. I love the sweet science of boxing, so I'm not a novice. Um, I'm not someone that only shows up to view boxing when a big fight is on television or pay-per-view. That's not me. I like boxing. I love boxing. And uh, definitely will be watching this match tomorrow night. You know, boxing is so funny because it's relatable to life in so many ways. Um, And just these two guys alone, man, we can learn so much from and apply the certain lessons to our own lives. You know, um, you got Earl Spence from Dallas, Texas. Now, that is one reason I am rooting for Earl Spence. He's, he's a Dallas native. But I'm also rooting for, for Earl because I coincide and I can relate more to his style. And I'll get to that. We also have Terrence Crawford, great fighter also, a bit more flashy. I don't consider him a slick fighter. You know, a lot of people have been saying he's a slick fighter. I don't consider him a slick fighter. Uh, Slick fighters, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, uh, Floyd, um, Sweet Pea, you know, Pernell Whitaker. There's a few out there, some slick boxers. And when I say slick, meaning they don't take a lot of punishment. They don't uh, get hit often. Terrence Crawford gets hit a lot. He is a bit flashy, uh, very athletic, but he gets hit a lot. And I'll get to that. And so you got these two gentlemen who have different styles, you know, and just like us in life, in this world, you got people with different types of lives, different, different types of approaches to life, uh, different types of ways of communicating uh, verbally, uh, through body language, non-verbally, different ideals, different um, belief systems. You know, we go on and on. There's a lot of differences. But the amazing thing is that there's not one style, there's not one type of person that has success cornered. You can find success in all types of different ways. You don't have to be a certain type of person. And you can find success in boxing in different types of boxers. So there's not just a one type of boxer that finds success. You could be a brawler, you could be a bruiser, you could be a box puncher, you could be a slick fighter, a defensive fighter. Uh, you know, you can use the jab, utilize the jab more, the hook, uppercut, you know. Different types of boxers have had success, just like with life and people. But I want to dive into the history of these boxers, these boxers' background, and see what we can learn from their stories. So we got Earl Spence, as many of you know, was involved in a horrific car accident a few years back. And he had had warning signs, I'm sure. If he was here to talk with us, I'm sure he would tell you and me that there were warning signs. He had had uh, some experiences that almost got him in trouble, um, that was trying to tap him, to wake him up. 
but he ignored it or he ignored them. And so after a while, God, the universe had to step up the ante and really get his attention. And according to him, it's changed his life. And that happens with us in, in, in life, right? You know, he's a boxer, but that happens with us all in life. You know, we get warning signs, we don't listen, we don't take heed. And so the warning signs <laughs> become greater, louder, uh, more costly, and then you have a big bang, which you can lose a lot from, and some people have lost their lives from. Uh, fortunately, he didn't lose his life. Fortunately, we didn't lose our, our life. But uh, this happens. And, you know, at his own admission, he wasn't very disciplined. He would gain weight after matches, between matches. He would walk around 170, 180, and then have to cut that weight to 147, that's the welterweight uh, level. He had to cut all that weight. And so a lot of times he couldn't go into training camp just working on technique. Uh, he had to go in there actually losing weight. It was a fat camp and a training camp. And so that takes away from studying and working on technique and different things you want to do in the ring because you're focused on losing weight now. And a boxer never wants to be in that situation. Like you said, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And a side note, that's what makes Floyd Mayweather so, one of the reasons he's uh, so dynamic and special, because Floyd never let his weight get out of control between matches, very disciplined, very focused. And, you know, Floyd has his own issues, or has had his own issues outside the ring. But... He is a focused brother. He is disciplined when it comes to that, his craft. He takes it very seriously. So even between matches, Floyd's walking around weight maybe be maybe 150, 152, and he will only have to cut a few pounds. You know, that's very disciplined. And so you got you to gotta salute that. But we all have our things that we're great at, and then we all have our things that we really need to work on, that thorn in our side that keeps us humble and lets us know Hey, man, you ain't quite as great as you think you are. And then we have things in our lives that let us know you ain't quite as bad as you think you are. That balance. Um, yeah, so Earl had the accident. It was a, it's a long uh, process to, to come back, to rehabilitate. He did not take a tune-up. I mean, his brother went straight. Uh, so to Danny Garcia, who's a, who's a puncher, a good counter puncher, has a, a great hook, and um, he molly whopped him. He, he, uh, he dominated Danny, and Danny's no slouch. Um, he had another incident with, with his retina. Uh, had to get surgery on that and some kind of accident, and uh, recovered from that. Didn't take a tune-up. Went straight to... Uh, Ugas, and uh, dominated him and broke his nose, his ribs, uh, his eye socket. Yeah, it really battered the man. And so Earl Special, Earl Special, he's resilient. Uh, he's a fighter. He's a dog. Um, you got to salute that. You got to salute that. And one of the reasons I like Earl style, because I can relate to it, Earl's not flashy. He's fundamentally sound. A lot of people criticize that. A lot of people don't like that. Some people do like it. I love it. Uh, people call it basic. I wouldn't say basic. He does subtle. He does subtle things that if you're really not paying attention, you may not see it. But he can make adjustments. It's real subtle. It's real technically fund fundamentally. Well, yeah, it's real technical and, and fundamentally sound. And so he's not flashy with it. He... he uh, if you were training your son or daughter to box, you would say, watch Earl Spence. If you want them to have, want them to have a long career, if you want them to be as safe as possible, 
you would say watch Earl. You wouldn't say watch Roy Jones Jr. You wouldn't say watch Terrell, I mean Terrence Crawford. You would say watch Floyd Mayweather, who's fundamentally sound. Also, uh, and could be flashy, but fundamentally sound, uh, defensive minded. You would say watch Earl. You know, it's a few few people. Um, I like it. It's fundamental, and uh, that's my style. That's me. And so that's how I am with the, with my athletes, man. With uh, you know, uh, like you said, he's the he's the Tim Duncan of boxing. Tim Duncan, NBA player, former NBA player, basic, fundamentally sound. Uh, I was a huge Jawan Howard fan when he was at Michigan. Uh, Wolverines College, and when he went to the NBA, huge uh, Juwan Howard fan. And everybody, well, I don't say everybody, most people were huge Chris Webber fan on that Fab Five team. And I get it, flashy, you know, dunking this way, that way, but he wasn't fundamentally sound. Uh, you can have, you'll have a longer career being fundamentally sound. Uh, Juwan Howard had a long career long productive career. Chris Webber did not have a long career. Um, that's just how it usually works. Uh, Roy Jones didn't have a long productive career. He started getting knocked out because once his athletic abilities start diminishing, he wasn't fundamentally sound. He wasn't defensively responsible. And so it caught up to him. Floyd had a long productive career defensively responsible, fundamentally sound, does it the right way, and so he could have a long career. Um, that's just what it is. Muhammad Ali took a lot of hits. Flashy, athletic, wasn't really responsible defensively. You know, took a lot of ba uh, hits and battering, but it was flashy. It, it's good for the eyes, man. It, it's, it's pleasing to the eye, but and it has its place in life. You know, it has its place in life. But I just believe you want your foundation to be sound. And then maybe work on top of that with the flashiness. And I think that's what, what Floyd did. Um, so Earl has had his, his ups and downs. He's had his challenges, but he's fought back. And these challenges... These ups and downs are self-inflicted, like many of our problems are self-inflicted. I can look at my own, myself, my own life, and I say most of the things I've gone through were self-inflicted. You know, and in hindsight, you, you go, well, could they have been avoided? I could have avoided that. Maybe it's something I just had to go through, and that's not a cop-out because you have choices, right? But if I didn't go through certain things, I wouldn't be in a certain place because I wouldn't have gained the discipline, the knowledge, the wisdom to get me to another level. So I embrace it all. You know, I count it all joy. And it's all about perspective. I, t I talk about that a lot, perspective. And it's all about perspective. Whatever you're going through, you know, a loss, it's not a loss if you're learning. It's a lesson. And so uh, a gain is not a gain if you're not growing, right? We can have gains, looks like they're gains, but we're not growing spiritually, emotionally, intellectually. Um, is it really a gain? So it's all about perspective. Then we have Terrence Bud Crawford. He's had his own self-inflicted wounds. You know, Terrence was a wild boy back in the day, had, had anger issues. And I think he still struggles with anger issues. You know, I saw some of that come out in his last press conference yesterday. Very emotional. And a lot of times flashy guys, uh, athletic, super athletic guys are emotional most times. You know, uh, they're dynamic. That's what makes them them. And it's not really a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, as long as you can manage it. It's not really a bad thing. Uh, we all have our different, you know, uh, lives and, and the way we function around here. But uh, 
Terrence, back in the day, he gambled, won a lot of money. He's leaving the establishment where they're gambling at. He's sitting in the car, he's shot in the head. He said that changed his life. He had to start moving differently. Uh, he's still here, of course. Obviously, resilient. He's a dog. He's a fighter. You know, so both of these men, although they have different styles, they have similar stories when it comes to enduring self-inflicted wounds and fighting back and persevering and enduring. And here they are, man, on the biggest stage about to fight in Las Vegas pay-per-view. Um, the world is going to be watching. It's going to be a hell of a fight. Um, yeah, you could get through anything like these gentlemen are showing us if you have the right perspective, have desire and heart, and have some fight in you. You got to have some dog in you. There's no way around it. Yeah, regardless of your personality, uh, your ideology, your belief system, your background, whether you were born into wealth or poverty, whatever it is, you're only going to go so far without that dog in you, without that fight. Uh, and contrary to belief, there are people who were born with silver spoons in their mouths uh, they have fight, they have dog. And there are people who come from the hood, the gutter, hard times, humble beginnings, who have no dog in them. So you can't judge about, you can't judge a person about, uh, judge a person from where they're from. Uh, you got to look at the mindset, the heart, where they're at. Where you're from, we had no choice in the matter. But we do have a choice about our present, where we're at mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. That's left to us. And so uh, it's going to be a great fight, I think. I think Earl's going to win because he's fundamentally sound. I think Terrence is going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, but the thing about athletic dynamic people that just need to catch you one time. No matter how fundamentally sound you are, not, no matter how uh, responsible you are defensively, if you slip, they have the ability to just catch you and that's it. Fight over. Uh, Earl, he's probably not going to knock out Terrence quickly. I see Earl uh, winning by stoppage around around 11, 10 or 11th round. It's a 12-round uh, battle. I, I see them stopping it. Oh, I see him winning by decision. Yeah, Earl has that battering type power. He just, he just beats you down over a period of time to where he makes you quit. Terrence has that dynamic one punch power, it catches you. And it's so explosive, he can just knock you out. I don't think Earl's power is explosive. It's battering, you know. Um, it's, 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 it's battering, man. If you ever been in a fight, I've never been knocked out in a fight. Um, I have knocked out a couple of people, but I've never been knocked out in a fight. I have been in fights where it just seems like it's going on forever. And you, you're hitting each other, body shots, head shots, grappling, a little wrestling, tugging, you know, slinging each other around. Man, when that fight is over, you're so worn down, and you feel the effects of that fight from either two weeks to a month, you still feel it. Your body is not right. Your body is bruised up. 
it's not right, man. You can you can feel the effects of that. Well, I felt the effects of that like up uh, upwards to a month one time. That's what Earl does to you. You know, and I, I've been told in boxing, it's probably better to get knocked out quickly. You can recover quickly to the next fight, um, opposed to being battered for several, several rounds. Yeah. So that's what I hear. Like I said, I've never been knocked out, so I don't know, but that's what boxers say. So if Terrence wins, it would be because he knocked out Earl early. Uh, before, before the fifth round. If it goes past the fifth round, Earl, Earl's winning. Yeah, because he gains steam. The longer the battle goes on, the longer the fight goes on, Earl gets stronger, it seems like, or the opponent gets weaker. He's just so stubborn. Uh, just focus. And he feels like you're going to quit eventually. Terrence doesn't really think like that, to batter you like that. He wants to get you out of there. He's catching you, slipping. He's setting traps. And... Um, just what it is. So, yeah, I got Earl Spence winning, but it's going to be a good fight regardless. It's going to be a good fight. Like I said, this is not a boxing channel, but I'm impressed with these two men, uh, their history, their trek, where they come from, their battles, things they've over overcome. I think many of us can relate to those things. And uh, it's not by accident. It's not a coincidence that even the Bible makes several references to the sport of boxing. Make several references to track or, or uh, track and field. You know, endurance, basically endurance, being in shape, being disciplined, being focused. These were super athletes are. And in our own right, we gotta be those type of athletes in life. Super focused, super disciplined, uh, enduring, uh, super endurance. And that's going to uh, take us to great heights. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this fight. So let me know what you think, Toasters. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.